The First Heaven Revelation 21 1 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. At the end of the millennial reign of Christ, a new heaven and a new earth replace the first heaven and the first earth. We understand that the first heaven not only includes the atmosphere that surround the earth but also includes the planets and the stars. Isaiah 34 4 And all the powers of the heavens shall melt, and the sky shall be rolled up like a scroll, and all the stars shall fall like leaves from a vine, and as leaves fall from a fig tree. The imagery in the book of Isaiah is also reflected in the book of Revelation. Revelation 6:13 And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Revelation 6:14 And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The end of this present age will include a proverbial house cleaning. In the middle of Daniel's 70th week three astounding events take place. The church is hidden in the wilderness for three and one half years, Michael the Archangel, makes war on the dragon and his angels and casts them from heaven into the earth, and the Antichrist will reveal himself to the world. Revelation 12 6 And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Revelation 12 7 And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Revelation 12 8 And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Revelation 12 9 And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceives the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. I believe that the war in heaven fought by Michael and his angels will take place in the second heaven. In the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul explains that we are at war with an evil hierarchy that presently holds the high ground, so to speak, of being positioned in heavenly places. Daniel 12 1 And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stands for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. When the devil no longer holds the high ground, in the second heaven, I believe the world will begin to see some wonderful miracles performed by the saints of God. The reason we experience so little miraculous activity in our present time is because the devil has been so successful in sowing doubt and disbelief in our minds, the soulish realm. Daniel 11:32 And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong, and do exploits. I suspect that when the devil is cast down there will be a great metamorphosis in the church. At this point in time the stark difference between the saints of God and the rest of the world will clearly be manifest. However, it will also be a time of unprecedented danger for the church. Matthew 10:21 And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. Matthew 10:22 And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. At the same time that the devil is cast down to the earth, the man of sin, the man of lawlessness will rise up. His number one priority will be to wage war against the saints. Revelation 12:17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We see that the woman in the wilderness is the church because her seed has the testimony of Jesus Christ. This surely does not describe the nation of Israel. Also, the beast wages war on the saints. I have written more about this topic in my free book, Christian Exodus, there is a link below this video. Revelation 13 7 And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds, and tongues, and nations. 
Revelation 13 8 And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus didn't promise his disciples riches and fame in this world, he promised them hatred and persecution. John 15 18 If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. However, it is this very persecution and hatred that causes the saints of God to overcome the world. Just like the Lord overcame death and sin on the cross, the saints of God will overcome the world by confessing his name even unto death. Revelation 12:11 And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Revelation 12:12 12, 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea! For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he hath but a short time. Jesus compares the last days with the days of Noah but he also says that in terms of tribulation there never was a time like it in the past, nor will there be a time like it ever again. Considering some of the great distresses described at different times in the Bible, this is a very solemn warning indeed. Matthew 24 21 For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Matthew 24 22 And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Jesus is saying that nothing would be left alive unless he personally comes back to save the inhabitants of the earth. Considering the weapons that many governments have at their disposal these days, nuclear, biological, chemical, it is not too difficult to conceive of all life on earth being completely wiped out unless a supernatural deliverance occurs. Luke 21 25 And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Luke 21 26 Men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Adding to the man-made disasters that threaten us, we also must consider all the supernatural dangers that will be added to the mix including, fallen angels, demonic entities, celestial and terrestrial catastrophes and the devil himself making an appearance. No wonder that Jesus says that men's hearts will be failing them for fear. The last days are not something we can physically prep for, our only defense is to get closer to God. We will need supernatural protection against the supernatural threats we are facing. Do not fool yourselves into thinking that if these are the last days then they don't seem too difficult to handle. We are just in the beginning stages. The Apostle Paul said the last days were like the pains of a woman about to give birth. The pain gets progressively more frequent and the pain get progressively more intense. 1 Thessalonians 5 1 But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. 1 Thessalonians 5 2 For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 1 Thessalonians 5 3 For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The church needs to have the same attitude as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because they are the best example we have of saints facing an impossible situation with steely faith. Daniel 3:16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Daniel 3:17. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O King. Daniel 3.18 But if not, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. If all this seems too terrible to even contemplate, we need to remind ourselves that burying our heads in the sand will only make things worse. 
If you knew a flood was about to occur, wouldn't it be nice to have a boat handy? I think Noah would say yes. Likewise, knowing that Jesus is coming back soon, wouldn't it be nice to be ready to meet him? Luke 6:22. Blessed are ye, when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Luke 6:23. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for, behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Have a great week. Thanks.